Have you ever seen people just waiting at the gate while the gate agent is calling up people to enter the plane? Then when the cabin doors is just about to close, you finally see those same people who were sitting in the gate area come on the plane and grab seats that seemed empty. Well, chances are those people didn't pay for the flight or they only paid pennies on the dollar to contribute to the gas it will take to get to your destination. If it's an international flight, then they probably also paid to contribute to gas, taxes, and customs fees. The way they're doing this is called flying standby. I've flown standby before. The ability comes with its own set of pros and cons. Today, I'm gonna to explain how to fly standby in 2022. We'll see if you can use standby to get to your next destination for next to nothing. And I'll help you decide if it's even worth the trouble to help you save a couple of hundred dollars. Engage. This is Passport Kings. Welcome aboard abroad. My name is Rock Land. I'm a travel advisor. Passport King shows you samples of travel destinations so you can make an informed decision when you're picking your next vacation. All right, so what is standby? Standby is a perk that airlines offer to their employees. Along with the excellent salary that airline companies pay their employees, they also offer a lot of other benefits that include the privilege of flying standby. Standby allows a person to get on an airplane that's not full and take it to whichever destination the flight is already going. A lot of airline employees are not based in their hometowns. Many of them have to commute to work in different cities via flights. The standby perk allows employees of companies to get to critical destinations like their Bay City or back home when they get off of work. Flying standby allows these people to use the seats that are not filled by paying passengers so employees can commute. Since a lot of planes are not filled to capacity when leaving cities on other days, I guess the companies decided that they may as well let their employees travel for leisure in these empty seats. They call them standby because employees have to stand by waiting to see if a paying passenger purchases those empty seats last minute. Inline companies also give their employees buddy passes. Buddy passes extend the standby benefit to the family and friends of the employee. The employee gets a handful of buddy passes that they can offer to their loved one. When the scenario arises that a plane is not going to be filled to capacity, the employee can put their family member on the standby list for the flight. If the seat is not purchased before the cabin door closes by another passenger, the family member will then be able to sit in the empty seat for free or at a lower price that covers the taxes and fuel for the flight. Now this list goes by hierarchy. The standby list will prioritize people on it by who the company feels is more essential to fly. Each company has a different set of rules. The considerations of this list include, but are not limited to, one, the importance of these people getting to their destination, an employee getting to work usually gets top priority. Two, the position of the employee, pilots usually get top priority. Three, how close the family member is to the employee, the spouse of the employee is top priority. And four, the length of time that employee has worked with that company. Employees with a long history with that company will most likely get their people on first. Now watch to the end of this video so you can learn how to book flights that are sometimes cheaper than what the standby people pay. And if you haven't yet, hit subscribe and press the notification bell. Now someone told me that you can use your credit cards to fly standby. I believe that this used to be an option, but as of the writing of this video, I can't find a credit card company that offers the option of standby. I know that if credit card users get to the airport much earlier than their flight, it's possible for them to get on an earlier flight going to the same destination if that flight is not full. But I've seen regular passengers use the same option. If I'm wrong and you know more about credit card perks that offer this option, please comment below and let me read about it. Now how to fly standby for American Airlines, Southwest Airlines, Frontier Airlines, Delta Airlines, and United? The only way of getting on the standby list for American, Frontier, Southwest, Delta, or United is to work for or be the spouse, parent, significant other, or close friend of one of the airline's employees. Now here are the benefits of flying standby. If you're one of the lucky ones that are able to use the standby benefit, you'll be able to fly to cool destinations for next to nothing. Two, the life of a pilot or flight attendant can be a lonely one. Having the ability to have a spouse or close friend meet you in a boring city when you have the free time when you're not working can break the monotony of working alone and long distances from home. It also comes in handy when a parent wants to come visit you. To get the best standby experience, you should do homework before flying. Most airlines will now let you download the airline's app when flying standby. This gives you the ability to make quick decisions and access flight information quickly on your smartphone. You'll be able to see ahead of time which position that you're in on the standby list and how likely you are to get on the flight. 
but there are cons of flying standby. Number one, when you walk on a plane last, many people would think that you were late and the reason why the plane was held up. Another one is waiting to see if your name gets called by a gate agent can be uncomfortable. Three, you'll have to be on your best behavior on this trip. Any infraction will be taken out on the employee who gave you the buddy pass. You could get them suspended or even fired if any interaction with anyone goes south. Almost everyone can tell that you're flying standby and they will have a look of disdain for you because they paid more. Now most of these cons depend on how you feel about what other people feel about you. But at the end of the day, who cares what they think? But even worse cons are it's possible to come to the airport ready to get to a destination and never be able to get there. Choosing to fly standby either internationally or the holidays or during peak travel periods is close to impossible. Even worse, you could be trying to get home from a country abroad and get stuck at the airport overnight because all of the planes of that day was full. You have to be flexible. If you're flying to a hotel or resort, you may miss some of the best times of your stay because you are in an airport waiting for an empty flight to let you board. You may be paying for a day in a hotel room that you never get to use. To avoid these possible vacation disasters, you are most time better off using a flight curator. Mine is available at www.passwordkings.com. My service offers and compares over 4 million flights and hotel brands in one place. Or do you have a group trip coming up? I have six plus years of organizing groups for vacations to Vegas, the Caribbean, and Africa. I'll make sure that you get the lowest prices on a superb getaway that you and your crew won't soon forget. Now the videos that I attach to the end screen gives you some insights on how to book cheaper airline tickets and how to be more comfortable on long flights. But now that you know all the pros and cons of using standby, become a pilot. You know you always wanted to. Or give birth to a flight attendant so you can travel the world for close to free like a king of passport tickets.